Russia began using KH-101 cruise missiles with outdated Soviet R-95-300 engines. A photo of the wreckage of a missile with this engine was posted on the War Underscore Home Telegram channel. Only some of the KH-101 missiles used in the November 17th missile strike were equipped with R-95-300 engines. The fuselages were marked with a mark indicating the installation of the R-95-300 engine. These missiles are usually equipped with Russian TRDD-50A engines. This is the first recorded case of such a symbiosis between a modern Russian cruise missile and an outdated Soviet engine. Given that Russia does not produce them, it is likely that they are taken from old Soviet stockpiles or disassembled from the remains of KH-55 cruise missiles. The production of subsonic rocket engines in Russia is a weak point in the entire production chain. Previously, the R-95-300 engines, in addition to the native KH-55 cruise missiles, were found in almost all detected KH-59 guided missiles. The R-95-300 engine was produced in a large series, in some years, the production volume reached 1,500 units. After the collapse of the USSR, Russia was tasked with import substitution of engines for strategic cruise missiles. At that time, the development of serial production of Omsk-designed TRDD-50 engines began. The KH-101-KH-102 is a line of conventional and nuclear-capable air-launched cruise missiles developed and deployed by Russia. A stealthy missile, the KH-101-102 is designed to defeat air defense systems by flying at low, terrain-hugging altitudes to avoid radar systems. The KH-101 carries a conventional warhead, while the KH-102 is believed to carry a 250 kT nuclear payload. It travels on a low-altitude flight path beneath infrared and radar systems, and its use of radar-absorbing composite material makes the missile challenging to detect. Point one, its accuracy is also believed to be quite high, employing the electronic GLONASS satellite navigation. At launch the missile weighs 2,300 to 2,400 kg and is fired without a booster, using the launching aircraft's momentum at release to give it initial velocity. Andriy Yusov, spokesperson for Ukraine's Ministry of Defense's main intelligence directorate, says that as of November 11, Russian forces have nearly 300 KH-101 cruise missiles, according to 24 Channel. Russia continues its deliberate daily air attacks on residential areas and civilian infrastructure. Since October 2022, it has systematically targeted Ukraine's energy infrastructure with extensive missile and drone assaults, aiming to disrupt civilian life, particularly during the upcoming winter months. Yusov reveals that Russian potential for manufacturing of KH-101 cruise missiles remains substantial. According to estimates from Ukraine's military intelligence, Russian defense industry enterprises can produce 40 to 50 of these missiles per month, Yusov stated. The Osprey is back in the air after being grounded for months following a crash last November that killed eight U.S. service members in Japan, but there are still questions as to whether it should be. The complicated aircraft flies fast like a plane but converts to land like a helicopter, and even minor mistakes can turn deadly. Experts say it can struggle to maintain the lift needed to fly like a helicopter. The Associated Press has found that safety issues have increased in the past five years and the design of the aircraft is contributing to many of the accidents. Yet Osprey pilots are some of its greatest defenders because it can fly where others can't to rescue troops. Wow, Osprey's crashing now. It's it's because these aircraft are getting old. And problems are starting to emerge that to a certain extent were baked in when the aircraft 
was designed, but are inherent issues with the design that are emerging as time goes on. Whenever you lose somebody, um, you'll try to get everyone together and, and create something so you, you always remember them. It's in a place that we see every day. This this platform is not routine, right? We, this is a complex platform because we are special operations uh, and we operate out in the extreme environments. Um, that's what our country calls us to do. And so we need a platform that allows us to do those things.